there we have. What do you think of the place? That's nice. You don't like the table, guy? Yeah, it's hard on the shins. But you know who you can blame for that? Gotten. Yeah. Because he was building your house, and I said, fuck Garrett's house. My table won't stand up. The legs aren't strong enough, and he built all that for me. Ah, he done a good job. Yeah. But it is, that could have been a little bit higher there now, and I wouldn't um, have four beds in my shin already. I'm sure, you can move in every direction. You can move this, you can move this. You can even move your legs. Like, you don't need to be under such pressure, guy. <laughs> That's hard. Hey, did you see, see the way I looked after you? Got you your. I asked the lads, did they want to have a drink? And because we're all busy and we have to go home, we can't even have a drink. So Greg's on Coke. No, <laughs> Luke said zero because he's on a diet now. He's on the gain train. Aren't you, Greg? Always, David. And Garrett likes boost. We were drinking last night there. Oh, yeah. You didn't bother your whole coming to the few drinks. I was doing a podcast. That's a lame excuse. With Father Brain. A lame excuse. I was busy. See, this is the story of my life now. I never get to hang with you anymore. I feel like you don't love me. Will you go to Mass in the morning now? Absolutely. Good oh, man. I, I went this evening. <laughs> and I go first thing in the morning. That's good, what I do. Good Mass. Yeah. Good, you like a good long Mass. Uh, I don't like long Mass. You don't miss Mass though? No. No. Would you go every week? Most weeks, yeah. And what's your favourite prayer? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I like him all so much I don't, <laughs> I, I don't have a favourite <laughs> You couldn't choose I wouldn't be a fierce uh, praying man now But I don't think it's any harm to go to Mass And Which Jesus is your favourite? Baby Jesus Of course like it is. is Greg? I don't know Greg This is what's going to happen now right? Okay. I'm going to be very clear right. If you don't Speak into that mic Okay Alright I am going to get up I fucking grab you by the back of the neck in the hospital hall and I fuck you through that wall. The chances of that uh, are fair, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> everyone likes baby Jesus more than... Everyone does. They do. Because babies are cute. Not all babies. Have you ever seen an ugly baby? I don't know. I don't look at them that much, do I? I have. I've seen an ugly baby. You were an ugly baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. You were an ugly man, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway man. right Don't be calling me ugly right Don't be bullying me on my podcast So Loads of people the last time Wanted me to get you on again Because they felt it wasn't All G and G related They wanted to have a more G and G one They were wondering why I picked Garrett to go into business Rather than you That's probably one Why did you It was you? more honest and <laughs> straight her and definitely more honest it was it, that's absolutely not the case better look what was I doing when you started where was I Very you were actually little. doing nothing no I was in Pat Collier was I no you are on the dole I got you no, the I was job. on the lorry yeah yeah yeah, the, yeah. on the dole that was a, I was never on the dole it took us a long time to straighten out just there because you were too lazy to go sign up <laughs> <laughs> hey do you know you don't have to you can do it online now I suppose you couldn't back then seemingly I don't know I've never been on it no nor me but you know, Thank God. maybe we'd be better off at this Probably. time. Hey, Greg, why did you go into business with Gara? Were we on the lorries two of us? No, uh, no, I was mechanically. You're not speaking into the mic either, you prick. Sure, he asked me a question. You can move it. Me. Look, why, look, hey, look. Oh. Hey, why don't the mic come oh, hello. down here? Why doesn't it come here so I can move my head? Does it have to be there? Hey, we'll get used to it. He'd want to get used to it. So I can look at him when talking. He can. Look. Oh, so I have to pull the whole thing with me? Simple. Uh, why did we go into business? Thanks, Ma. Sounds about Because we were working anyway. Hard. Yep. And we were doing all the hours we could do. So we said, why not try and do it for ourselves? Nothing was changed other, other than... Because we had to get to work and get the machines. There wasn't a lot going on, though. It was kind of... It was all nine, so things were a bit shit. There was a recession. So I said, fuck it. It was a great time to start. Was it, though? No. No good time to start. It's hard enough. We wouldn't have got started without the recession. No, probably not. Why? Um, well, we went up to John Mackerel, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Come out soon. And uh, he rented us a machine. Because machines wouldn't have been selling. They weren't selling. And he rented one. And that got us going. Yeah. We took a chance. I was at home one day and I said to Gary, we'll, go, we'll talk to John Mackerel. And John McElroy was the one that got us going, really. And then Aim Flaherty gave us a, a bit of work, wasn't it? Yeah. I think. Yeah. What, what machine did that was day 20? Yeah. We rented that off him <coughs> as well, actually. And they are some 
Hannah Scudder. Because they were bleak times though. They were. A they? lot of people helped us. Who did? A lot of people. Gave us a good dig. Dig out. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I suppose the question on everyone's lips is, why didn't you take me with you? David, Why'd you, you leave me on the cold? How, <laughs> do you remember how useless you were back then? No? Back then I wasn't. Back then I was working. I was on lorry. Uh, you were very unorganized. You're going to work in slippers. No, that was before that. What was it? I was on the lorry. Remember, you were working. I was on the lorry. Yeah, you were still unorganized. Had you gone to pack collier at that stage? No. You were useless. <laughs> you weren't. <great. laughs> it was only when you went to collier. Then Come you on. You really got your shit together. Well, be honest. I thought I worked as hard as I could in Lurry. Yeah, but you were still you were useless though. That's fucking harsh. <laughs> Not useless, unorganized is right. Well, you look, if there's two people telling me, it must have been true. Actually, uh, you know you are. <laughs> <laughs> right, I was useless. You were a changed man when you went to call you. You were head down by. Necessity is an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. You worked like a faker then. I had to. Huh? Remember yeah. fucking, remember trying to plan going to work and yokes broke down and having to get lifts down with G and leaving sure the car and balance it all. We were as bad. We had a decent yoke. God, we had a rover. <laughs> we had a rover, was it? Red. A 200 or something, was it? Uh, I don't know. Remember the trooper? Oh, I remember the trooper. You could see through the floor of it. Oh, it, was, it was bad now. And she would absolutely ate green diesel. <laughs> <laughs> and did <laughs> I know Back when we were young It was shocking wasn't it It was so hard to Leave the wood And all that green there And pull up and buy it <laughs> She couldn't She'd be mad Yeah yeah. Our vehicles love green diesel No And and customs didn't like working You know In the evening or in the morning That's when we were on the road Our biggest problem was If something broke down Having to leave the wood Middle of the day We were there Fake We're going to get caught in customs now Sure as fuck yeah. I remember if I slept it out, if I wasn't, uh, I slept it out one morning at uh, half six and I went, not, nah, I'm not going to work, I'll get coffee customs. Yeah. I think that was the fear on everyone. Because everyone was using green I was, I, I slept it out one morning going to work in, um, oh, I don't know where it was, but down around Care. And I had um, a Mitsubishi Charisma at the time. Well, not in everyone long. needs Charisma, Gah. Everyone needs Gah had a number play on that and he put on it deliberately. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Everyone needs Charisma. Do you want a sweet? I know I'm on a date. And here didn't the customs pull me. Um, but it was actually the guards pulling me and I had no tax course who, who taxed the Oaks back then. And I was pulled in and the customs were coming down dipping and I was pulled in. And uh, nothing was wrong in the back of my car on the EXE. I don't even know what that meant, but that's what was on the back of it. And uh, so the guard was giving me my ticket and he told me to tax the car and next thing the customs come over to the car and says, uh, is that diesel or petrol? And I said, Petrol, and the minute I said it, the sweat started down my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> right? Next thing the car landed me, tickling my balls. Go on with yourself. And I had to start the car and stand at the back of it. <laughs> yeah. Puff of he, black he smoke. the car and out the road. I must have known anyone now. <laughs> and so the morning going down Bird Hill, I was, after, I was driving the trooper. Mark was lying in the back. Yeah, it was my, my name. And it was a commercial vehicle. He was lying in the back, asleep. I was driving, Gary's in the passenger seat, customs pulls us over. So we were waiting for him to come down. I said, just I can't get caught again because they'll take the vehicle. So we switched. Right? <laughs> while, while we were waiting for them to come down, he jumped into the driver's seat. And that never came of it. She, uh, I think the, it was paid a fine, which was 1,800 quid at the time. I told her before she even dipped it, it was green in it, but she had to dip it formality, right? And um, oh, she was lovely. She was sounds bell. But she rang me a couple of days later and says, well, what story? Are you going to pay this fine or do I put it to court? You know, and I says, no, I, I'll chance the court because first offence, probably 500 euro, people are telling me, or 500 pounds, whatever it was at the time. And uh, nothing ever came. You go away with it. <laughs> That's cool. It is cool. What yeah. is? What other crimes have you got away with that? <laughs> ah. really, there are only s- small crimes you, that you, you, you do when you're Having that much money. <laughs> yeah. Necessity. Sometimes you just have to do stuff. Needs must. Yeah. Like, oh. it, it wouldn't be that you'd, oh, I'm not going to bother taxing the car, but you have fucking bills to pay. Well, no, it actually was that I wouldn't bother taxing the car. 
<laughs> the, the roads were bad and I just went this is a waste of time Gary was always so much cleverer than us wasn't he oh, money wise oh yeah, oh, yeah. ah you are guy I had a bob on the limit um, Angela she was well off wasn't she millionaire no, she was well organized though. I knew it yeah there had to be something it was useless because the minute he met her that's it been up and up and up yeah. change man change man yeah. like just money all the time new cars <laughs> he was buying remember you bought that little girl's Volvo Brand new one. See it hurty, yeah. See that, it was, that, was yeah. that was a girl's car. That was a girl's car. Brand new girl's car. We were very, we were young, like. Yeah, but how, how did you let that happen? I thought it was a beautiful car. Little girl's car. Well, it was for, it was Angela, Angela was on driving it. I know, but. Well, it was, your, it was your good car. It was a great car. But it was a girl's car. <laughs> Maybe it was a little girly, but. Did you feel manly driving around that car? I, I don't see, see, when you see her now going, what are you doing driving a manly G? Yeah, uh, true. Okay, well, let's All right, well, yeah, yeah, he has it there, doesn't he? Yeah. I'll always have you. <laughs> Garage, you're nearly finished your house. I know, a bit cool, yeah, but uh, maybe March. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Forward. And Greg, how come you haven't, like, now that you're at that stage in your life, like, me and Garrett are in the middle of it. We're, we're in the gore. Like, we're, that. no, we're like, Getting it done with kids and you've just small kids. I small have. kids starting out her journey in life, and because you were sexually active really young, and you <laughs> started having kids really young, you're finished now. Your oldest, your youngest is what? What's Greg? Nineteen. Nineteen. Like, he has his own car. It does. So you've no kids. I have three kids. No, no kitty kids. No. So you give like, a whole house full of adults. Yeah, but they're still kids. What's it like, Greg? What's it like to get up in the morning and go? I had to ban to work for nothing. I think it was always the way with me <laughs> to get up and to ban to work. <laughs> Things change as the generations, like, you know, you're more like you were babysitting the whole time and minding chaps and taking chaps to school. And we didn't do that. I didn't do that. Putting plats in hand. I hadn't time <laughs> to do that. And if anyone told you're, me, you're, you're, really, you're a really good dad. I'm shit dad. I know, you're a good daddy. You're a good daddy. You're a good mentor. Am I? Yeah. You're, You're angry. Even to him, to uh, all of us. Yeah. I am, yeah. I'm a good like mentor. If you want uh, unbiased, aggressive, if, ne- if needs be, advice, Greg's the man to go to. I go as far as to say that without you, he'd be still going around and mucking the wood and slip on shoes. <laughs> Getting hard to let go of these slip on shoes. <laughs> we, we, um, David started with Pat Collier. And we were working down the road at the same time. And it was lashing rain one morning. And David had pipe, no, tracks to do, hadn't he? And we met him in Porto or something. He had runners. He had no lunch. No gloves. He had no coal. He had nothing. We gave him wet gear. We, we, got, we got you sorted. I can't remember. Huh? I can't even remember. Can you not? No. And you went off, and I said, "You were to driving the Passat. Were you driving the Passat? No, it wasn't, was it? No, it was. The, it must have been when I started. Pat was the little pink car. She was a beau, a beau, a low blagila. It was a pink good car. People didn't laugh at her. Own. How she look? They definitely didn't. They're still laughing at me. <laughs> That's one thing about David. He'd drive anything. Oh, yeah, he'd well. give a fuck. No, you don't. If I was it. in a pile of dung, five hundred euro, as long as it's dead gone. Yeah. In fact, the shitter it is, the funnier it is. Yeah. But we said to David then that day, David, get yourself boots, get yourself a jacket, wet gear, and a diary, and write down everything. The diary is the big one. And my big God, one. you could ask David what happened five months ago. Yeah, yeah I write everything. Ever it, it, ev- it'd be down in that diary. That was thanks to you, Greg. He'd write down everything. Yeah, he would. To oh, the yeah. detail. And hey. Don't forget all oh, the little pictures as well with the right. Oh, little pictures of dicks. Think, yeah, Actually, he was our dicks twenty years ago. Our diaries were very funny. Yeah. We used to get each other's diaries and write pictures on them, and it was funny. You mostly now. Yeah, yeah. You know, you still do. I'd be looking at my diary in the machine, and I'd open up a, maybe next week's page, and there'd be a big picture of a dick, <laughs> or <laughs> big veiny dick. It'd be a good drawing as well, you or know. a caricature of someone we know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's guys. So I said to loads of people, um, you know, ask some questions. Because every time I go to the wood and we're there, I don't see any messages until I get home or whatever. And everyone, oh, ask Greg this, ask Garrett that. 
how come you don't do this or why have you done this? And the last one we didn't get in depth with. It. Mm. So will I just give a few of the questions? Oh. I'm not gonna ask the same question a million times. So I got variations of the same question. So I'll just um I'll be very vague with them. Okay. Will I start with the one that was asked the most? Go on. You would have sent a free speech, so <coughs> ask what you like. All right. You might um, get an answer though. The one that was like. asked the most was Greg, the famous slap. What's the whole story? Hmm. I don't know. You can only give your view of it, but like it's probably the question that comes up the most every time because it goes viral every so often and then it gets shared. But just that little snip of it that makes you look like a lunatic. People are very nosy, aren't they? Yeah, I hit someone a slap that deserved it. That's the moral of the story, <laughs> and I do it again. That's it. Yeah, I was done wrong. Just a rough. Just gives a rough fucking. Okay. Um, just so as I don't get asked on, again. Came on as a <laughs> sub. We're probably five minutes left. <clears throat> County final. Uh, quarter quarter final. And uh, just there was a free or something I was waiting for it to be taken and I felt a hand on me back and I turned around and I got a hurl into the face. And then I got punched and boxed in the goal mouth. And I didn't do anything because I thought maybe the umpire or the referees, had, you know, I, I had a fair idea they would see it because they were right there beside it. I have a fair idea they did see it. And Which you can see in the full video. Yeah, so because we were winning and there was only five minutes, I said I'd take the few belts and let him get a red card and go home laughing. And it went to complete 360. I got the red card. So I ended up with teak on, uh, red card, and I just said, feck it. If I'm going to go, I'm going to go for a reason. So I hit him. That was it. That's a good enough reason. Um, thanks, Sorry. Greg, for your candid, honest answer. Uh, why did you go back to two machines? Well, first of all, the reason we went to four machines. It was you. <laughs> it kind of was. It kind of was. Loads of... F we, I was getting messages flat out, and we were getting messages on the G&G &G page. Um, farmers wanting to cut private timber, and timber wanting to be cut. And uh, it was flat out, uh, like... Mm. But in reality, it was more, they just, they want timber cut for not. And you were going around, and we only want to do good work. And you come down, and you give a price, which would be a fair price, and they'd just get, get the cheapest. So it was kind of a waste of time like that. Ah, uh, yeah, look, the price <coughs> game's all right, but drivers are hard got two, and then you got really, really busy at what you were at, and then we were going to actually need two drivers. And to replace you was very difficult. And then to get someone that was good enough. Ah, it's just look, very hard to get. Not drivers, but like-minded drivers. Mm. You yeah. got you got busy. Yeah, you got busy. Yeah. Like when you were starting off and you said you get yourself a few jumpers and things like that. I mean, you never thought that it'd go as quick. No. You were fair busy the following Christmas. Yeah, it, it, I didn't anticipate it, no. No, I don't think any of us did, did And it? the fact that I was just on my own doing it. Mm. And then when we were looking for a driver, it's like you said, it's hard to find someone that is the same as us. Like we want to do real right, mind the machines and just do a good job. And uh, that was nearly impossible. Mm. Like I'd be um, like the other day you were after driving the machine and I went to fill it with diesel the next day. And you know, the little York, you shoved back into the quick release just yeah. to block it. And you hadn't that done. And I was like, fuck sake. Yeah. And 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 right <laughs> at, out about and right at that moment, like I went to myself, I am a particularly old bastard. Yeah. yeah. We 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 all get on to each other yeah, over little yeah. things. Little uh. things. And they're so silly, but we all have our things. If yeah. I got into the machine and they would be after drinking coffee, I'd see tiny little coffee stands on the dash. And I would go, that little prick. Really? And even when you were oh, driving, yeah. when you were driving the machine, you were You were worse. We, we, inside you were so Oh my God. Like, if we got in to drive your machine, you were fierce, particularly. Yeah. Well, when I'm 
when I'm driving, if I'm doing long hours in the machine, I like to get in, take off my shoes, and I like to be comfortable. But it, yeah, so you that's it's hard doing in the harvester. Though. It's, it's impossible. You can't do it. In no, the, in the harvester, you're constantly in and out. Yeah, and you even the amount you have to get out, even for check wind. Yeah, yeah, no. You know, just to get up and. I tried it. Well, you could fart in the machines, lads. No, no. I mean, (laughs) actual wind, yeah. Actual wind. I know. Yeah, if you cut the stumps a bit higher, you wouldn't be in now as much. (laughs) (laughs) I'm always telling Greg, up the stumps a little bit. But the two machines then, they're just wasn't the right work or enough work on drivers. And it's just pointless. No, it was, hey, look, it wasn't pointless. You know, everything kind of worked, but when... When you got so busy, we just said, Do you know what? You'll be a good third man, two of us to go. Because we, we, we were a three man set up yeah. at the start. And you were the guy doing all the brashing and the sawing. And when we started doing that, the type of woods we were getting, everyone was busy. Yeah. You know, because there was sawing all the time, there was brashing, there was tracks to be we'd, done. We had smaller machines as well. Yeah, mm. the machines changed a lot. Yeah. The amount of trees now that has to be sawed up is small towards the commencement. Yeah. yeah. 1270 is a bit of a saw with the big trees. But if there is a big tree... You're the man. I am the man. You are the man. Yeah. Can't sort I'll it. hug it and then I'll cut it. <laughs> 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 so then got rid of the I machines. Went, and when I got hot... <laughs> you make right shape it's all finished. Again. Got rid of the machines and went to the two big ones. Well, the machines that are fit to do both. They're not big machines. No, but they're... No, they're not. The forwarder has the potential to be bigger. It widens out a bit and yeah, it can bring it a bit more. Because that was what was always lacking with the old 1010. Yeah. Pe- just... People have to realise that timber 20 years ago was first generation and second and it was planted better and planted nicer. and Green fields. Do you know, you go up into a wood now that's on third generation and it's on a 30 degree hill, water flowing. They don't mound it straight up the hill now because of water. They mound it sideways. So you're heading up a hill with a machine and the only way you can cut it is to maybe rip a tree out of the ground and throw it to the lower side. And small machines can't do that. And if they do do it, you end up spending big money on them. You Mm. always straight up and down the hill is the way you go with sports of grass even. Mm. But um, they started mounding and putting lines crossways across the hill to slow down water to stop flash flooding. They blame this forestry on the mountain for the water coming quick. Do you know? So that's, and it makes it an awful lot harder to, to thin it then, you know, because you're always going across the hill. Mm. You know, the machines need to be fair, strong now. The, ro- strong. the woods are fair, rough. So and it's, e- it's we even, got them strong. It's even hard to mind them. It's harder to mind them now than it used to be. Yeah. I mind them no problem myself now. If you could keep David <laughs> off, it should be looking at him. He takes plenty of your way. Oh, nothing to him. Well, I, I didn't take enough out of your way last time. That's actually one of the questions. How long till I go? Um, this is actually kind of related. Is there a shortage of operators or just no one wants to work in forestry now? It's not that no one wants to work in forestry. No one wants to work hard, period. Mm. Like, they go to college, you know, not to be doing 60 hours a week. So... That's why it's hard to labs. The amount of people that do 60 hours a week. Do you know, like, I mean, I'd be listening to your podcasts and, like, you'd be busy and you know how it's like to be busy. Mm. But, like, everyone's busy. Like, I know lads that are driving forestry machines go home and farm. I know. When they get home. But it's also, there's more, ah, there's a little bit more to it. I always found with forestry myself. Um, it's not just about getting up and going to work and getting home late and doing a big day. You're, you actually have to get out timber. So you're judged from the time you get up in the machine to the time you get off it. What you go, what you cut. There's so, nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to hide in forestry. No. If you were doing f- 60 hours a week drawn in silage. It's know, for two weeks. It, it's, it's easy because you just do what's in front of you and no one's really minding you. Same with a building site, you know. You can hide. Yeah. There's nowhere to hide in forestry. When, you, when you're in forestry, you're on that machine. The boss knows what that's done that month. If it's done any harm, what you've broke, and it is a, it's a tough job now because even people get hard to pay for machines. Machines are expensive and rates are bad, and mm. it's a tough job. Uh, yeah. Let me see now. 
we answered this before. Who's Mammy's favorite? Sean. Well, I meant between the three of us. Ah, uh, she loves us all the same. But she does love Sean more. Yeah. It's because he's a country music singer. Isn't it? Yeah, he was that's the closest thing to our house. What's your favorite country music song, Sean's? I don't know. Oh, Greg. La, 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 la. <laughs> I thought I was digging him, didn't I? Oh, he's, a, he's, a, he's digging? a James Blunt man. He'd have no interest in I like a bit of James Blunt. Do you like Backstreet Boys? Uh, yeah, I like everything. You were a Garrett Brooks guy. Uh, Westlife, Garrett Brooks. Uh, everything. I, I would listen to everything. We listen to Eminem, everything. Eminem, like I love Eminem. Oh, yeah, we would listen to everything. Here's the question. Okay. How many times really has David fucked up in the machines? We only see the good video. Where's the bad? Uh, not too often, mm. now, to be fair. We don't have really break on. Oh, it's yeah. bogs once or twice. Yeah, no. That's the most embarrassing. And the only time we ever bog is in a place and I think I'm not going to bog. Like we we have ten tens and everyone that you be talking to say, ah, oh, you couldn't keep the cutting things on the wheel on the wheels are so unstable. And we're like, we've never turned over the trailer on ten ten. I've we never seen a ten ten year now. Mm. And like we do, we do kips like yeah. So no, we don't make too many. So you're great ads. I would stop. Never turned maybe over. We're just, just oh careful, no, just careful, man. I have turned over machines though. Or maybe I you're have just, never turned over machines. Maybe you're just slow on them. Maybe you just well, driving too slow. Snapping the crab behind you. Oh, 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 he got you there. Well, the new one now is impressive. No, I'm impressing. impressive. <laughs> David is on the old He's a better machine. The new 1010 is... It's a sow. I was driving it the other night and I was bringing out 5.5s and I loaded it up to the fucking balls and she snored up the hill. I'd probably like to hear that. I actually don't load the 5.5s five that big on her. I have a look. That oh, time. hey, I... I, I, I st- Look, I was testing same, her. Don't same, be breaking up our again. machine, David. It's a, it's a digger track. It's not stumps. And they're well able for it to drive right. It's a serious machine to go to him. It is. To know the bunk. Oh, no, I know. I drive it. Hmm. Guy, guy's very aggressive tonight, isn't he? Hmm. Were you, where were you today? I think he went to see Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> what did he tell you you were bald by? That's a fair bad sign, isn't it? He goes to see Sandy. I haven't seen him as aggressive in a long time. Where, where did you go to Sandy today? Ah, uh, and over to Rat Downey. Rat Downey? Sandy's in Rat Downey? Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, he's over there in that place to build that no one ever wanted. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is um, that open? It was open and that had stalls and everything. Now, we were booked in for five to five and we went in. <laughs> Sandy was gone. <laughs> 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 he was after doing a runner. That's why he's really? a bad form. Yeah, he was. And we actually had to go back down to the cafeteria and... Uh, We'd wait for him to come back. Oh, he so he wasn't gone. He just went no, for a no, shite. He, no, he didn't. He was gone. Like, the, your one that was... So got a new Santa. Your one that was working was there. Oh, oh Santa's finished for today. And you so booked at five? Well, we booked at five and there was people after us. I'd say Angela liked that. She was all right. Wasn't bothering her. So you didn't get to see Santa? No, we did. He came back. Oh. Yeah. So he did go for a shite. I don't know where he went. I'd say I, Sandy went for a shite. No, no, I don't think so. So I had a grand day. This is the worst part of my day. Why has Greg got such massive, big, enormous arms? I think it's carrying the two of you. <laughs> That'll be your back. Would you ever let... Oh, this is a good one. Would you ever let David become a partner in the business? If, if the money's really, right. If he gets really rich, yes. Yeah. That's not an answer. It is. You get rich, throw money at us, you're in. Are they nervous? Are ye nervous about how things are going, seeing that there could be another recession? No. I love recessions. Never waste a good recession, they say. Yeah. Uh, where do you see the company in five years? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm making noise here. Does that matter? Well, look, it's not so fucking it's... ideal. Which like you keep? Do you want eat something? Well, you sure, keep your hands not, busy. Would that not be noisy though? Yeah, but you can look. At, David can just look wants away. me to stay eat. No, I don't want you to stay eat. So. Eat something. David's mad to be the sexiest of all of us. It I don't. Ain't, ain't gonna I, you don't wish for what's already like a reality. Ah, David, your face. You're farting me, right? Do, That's you, it. do you have a brother who's more has, who's obsessed with Fiesta cars? No. No. None of us like Fords. So we've only gone into Fords in the last the last Yorkshire bar. I haven't. He never stops giving up about Ford. Never. And he drives a fucking cunt of a partner. I don't I drive a blingo. A blingo. They're the same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Giving over my forward. Another have a scrap. 
But I actually, I like scrapping Wales because, you know, with the Bilingo there, I'm not the dearest fan in the world. And if you hit him a belt in the wood or something like that, it's not, it wouldn't kill you like it would. If you hit your van, you'd be devastated because it'd be expensive to fix or anything. Like the night of the deers. Like the night of the deer. Coming in tonight, like, and the roads are fairly hey, bad, did, like. Did you know? I, <coughs> and a car came up behind me really, you know, quick. And I'm there with an all wheel drive yard. And I could push it on a bit, you know. I pulled in and let it out. But I was there thinking, when he passed, I knew why he was driving hard, because he was driving the company van. So if you stuck it in the ditch, it didn't really matter. Or does it matter to us? Have oh. the van stuck in a repair garage for five weeks? I'd miss it, like. Does it not really annoy you about Ford that they still have the same stupid key and big lock on the side of the door? You know, it's an inch... In diameter. They never changed that. They never changed that. No. Since the Sierra. I don't know. No, it doesn't bother me. I don't have it on my Jeep. You should let it go, Garrett. Just let it go. Or something else. It has never given a bother. I can't remember what it is. It's the door for the fuel. It's very annoying. Oh, very oh nice. that, it's not, it's no. that blue door. The wind had blowed open. It's a bad design. And then when the door closes in, um, they catch each other. What's your favorite vehicle? Um, that you've owned. You've never owned a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> the bank's always owned it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Your car now? I like my car, yeah. It's a grand car. If you but could buy any car in the morning, what would you buy? I'm not really into cars, to be honest with you. I like a nice car, but I don't get excited over cars like you. A He's car. never been into cars. No. You don't want to really care either. No. As long as it's a Volvo, you ha- you're happy. It's not, I'm not even a Volvo man. He's, Greg, help me here now. He's after saying that stupid sentence again. I'm not really a Volvo it's man. It's not. I'm an auto ball and in Waterford, man. You're after having about... Yeah, okay. Yeah, but you have five Volvos bought. I know I have five Volvos bought. And, and they're a nice car. Like, like I love my Jeep. You know? mm. I, I think it's beautiful. Yo. But it's them down there. They're, they're good enough. Like... Uh, all right. <laughs> well, different strokes for different folks. They obviously, you know, say if say if you had a bad experience, man, right? Obviously, they they, they treat different people different. Say if they come on a wanker, they probably don't treat him that way. So wanker, tell me, I'm a wanker. <laughs> he more or less car. Well, I tell you, right? I like the Volvo. I think they're a good car. But no offense, but there wouldn't be half the car to drive as the BMW. No, it's that woolly steer I don't like. Yeah, yeah, the soft steering. And I actually, his transit, I think the steering is desperately heavy on it. Since I put the big tires on it. Oh, uh, from the day I came. I drove up John Deere the other day. I thought it was fucking grand joke. A the John Deere car? No, I drove it to John Deere. Oh, to John Deere? Yeah. Did you not find the steering heavy? No. Oh, Damn, I think see. it's a fierce heavy steering. But you drive a Ford. I'd, I'm driving a Ford as well. Yeah. The Volvo has And a, the steering on the Berlingo is very, very light. It is. And your car or Jeep. Is so you're you're, you're driving. Paparazzi here, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're driving cars with really light, stupid steering. So you don't notice a shite thing when you're driving it. Yeah, no. Look, I drove um, tractors in you know years gone by that weren't power steering, and all we longed for and wished for was power steering, and now it's too light for you. You want big, heavy steering. You can't go from car, car, tractors to cars. You're going back a step. You want the light steering. You want the heavy steering. You want a heavy steer? No, you don't want a heavy steer. You don't want a real light steer. When I, I 14 years thing. of age, I pulled and tugged out steerings. I know course. what you pulled and tugged well, out. When you're driving the Volvo, right? <laughs> if you do, if you move the steering the slightest little bit, the car reacts. Hmm. The slightest little bit. Okay? So if you do that, the car does this. But if you're in the BMW and you, it just doesn't react like that. It's just a nicer thing. I and think when you're driving, I'm not going to say hard, but when you're driving like a lunatic. brightly, <laughs> it's nicer to have more of a feel in the steering. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe it doesn't suit the lads to you know, break speed limit. I, I don't break speed limit. Never. Oh. Ever. Ever. Uh, no one really does anymore because you'd be caught in a second. No, but they're a grand car. No, they're all good, but I just like, I do like Volvo. And, I, and there's always something in my head as well about their safety. Uh, it's just, yeah. and you know, they're mm. no safer than any other car now, I'd say. But there's always that thing in my head with them. And they are pledging that no one will be killed in a Volvo 
in five years' time. That's a fair pledge. And it, and it is a, a pledge that they, they have made. Now, don't ask me how they made it. Why haven't the BMW plows into one? How sure, can, no, how look, can I, they I, I make know. that pledge? I don't know. But they have, have done it. And what do you think of them on going electric? Oh, actually, waste of time. Me. It's a waste of time. Sure, like, if all the Volvos are electric in the morning, you're not going to buy one. You want to be a lunatic to buy an electric car. Yeah, well, we would, yeah. Would you buy an electric car? Not in a million years. Well, a million years is a long time. Bro. I don't care. In a million years it's... time, it could be all electric, right? You have to buy one. Greg, you've no I choice in a million years. Alive, <laughs> but can you imagine heading down the road and pulling up into a filling station? Pull up into any filling Gary station. Gary smoking his hash and the... Uh, and there's 25 this cars every two minutes filling these. It's menthol hash. liquid. It's not hash. It's hash. It's not hash. How long are you off fags? Since uh, 14. Were you highly addicted to them? Yes. And you're on that since 14? Not this exact one. But ones like that? Ones like that. And are you highly addicted to that? Uh, yes. No, I could do without this for five or six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> do you, hey, remember Garrett's bag bag? I smoked Rollies. Garrett time. smoked Rollies, so he had a little bag all the time. <laughs> what was it? What kind yeah, of plastic so bag I, was it? I had the baler for making the fags, and then you have papers, and I chewed chewing gums as well, and I um, also had the tips. And I just had enough pockets for everything. <laughs> I've done stores bag. <laughs> and he walked around and we kept saying, just buy a bag. Just buy a bag that got, doesn't look as bad. I got a bum bag. Yeah. And I remember uh, one New Year's Day, I was giving up the fags. That was it. And I got the whole bum bag with all the fags and st- everything inside pegged into the fire. No way. <laughs> yeah. Three hours time, I had to go into Mount and buy everything. <laughs> <laughs> If Garrett rang me and said that he was out of what's the stuff called? Juice, I like to call it. Juice. Or his battery was failing. Okay, that means I'm out of here. He'd just fall to pieces. Ah no, I wouldn't fall to pieces, but why would I put myself through the hardship? Jeez, you only live once. You know, sweat above in the wood all day. Because he's not fags. God almighty, talk about torturing yourself. <laughs> sure, you would, you? Anyway, these, these aren't meant to be that bad for you. And if they are, what is it, only 10 years less in the nursing home? You're doing yourself Do you a think favor. you'll end up in a nursing home? Well, if I live to be an old age, I will. He's too young not to fuck him in. <laughs> <laughs> and, no no uh, problem. And they'll be right. They'll be right. Do you think your chaps will mind you or fuck you to a nursing home? <laughs> well, I think you're the one now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want them to mind me. I'd rather go into a nursing home. Would you like a nursing home? I don't think I'd want to mind me at home anyway. Why not? I'm not going to spend a couple of years changing their nappy and, and then expect them to change yours. It's not mad though in like back 30, 40 years ago it'd be unheard of. Most You'd go into a house and most people would have their granny or granddad definitely shining in the corner and just That they, was before um, every woman in the country was bullied out to work though. Yeah, Do you know those housewives, people wore a home to look after people. Yeah, there's no one at home now. No, no, no. But I wouldn't like my kids looking after me. I'd rather be in a home. I'd rather be dead. You don't have to whisper. You don't have to whisper, <laughs> Greg. If you are going to whisper, hey, hey, whisper hey. into it. I'd if rather be dead. Hey, if you're not, if, you, if it's because you don't want Matt to hear, he can hear everything. Matt, can you hear everything? <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know when you don't have any small kids now? Yeah. Do you find Christmas a bit more boring or is it a different kind of fun? It's pretty fun. It's better? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, I have, you know, I do see your kids and and when I do see them, you know, they're great crack, but it's nice to give them back too. Let me tell you, they're fairly... Greg was in my house the other evening when he was playing with Jane. Greg is scary <laughs> as he is. Kids love it. Mm. For some reason. I don't know how, because you're scary looking... No, I'm not. You are, you are intimidating. Well, I was there for probably about an hour, and by God, small kids, they're they're hard. And they're, they're busy. They're loud, and they're jumping on you, and they're... They're a good crack, though. Oh, it's tough going. It's busy. Yeah. It is busy. Because you notice when you go home, and they're, they just have so much energy, and you're at the point of your day where you don't, and you have to pretend that you do. And they're like jumping around, they want to play with you, and they're hanging out with you, and then they're gone. But they're so brave. Yeah. Like, say, when we were younger, and if our uncles came in, we didn't run over and jump up and get him to ask to kick a football around or anything like that. Now, 
they're just there's no fear in kids anymore. But I think that's because we interact with them. Maybe that is it, but no, they it's because we mother them so much. Yeah. We baby them. So why would they be afraid of anyone? Like, man, we grew up in Bep, your older brother. We're afraid of anyone bigger than us. How many times did you get bet? Never by you. You never. Oh, I, oh hey. <laughs> I never seen, I actually never seen him getting a slap off you. Oh, uh, no, maybe not as. No, I didn't. Yeah. Because, you know why? Because I kind of done what I was told. I yeah, but well, he's way younger. I mean, you were under me. We were always two gonna... year. Yeah, but well, me and Barry clashed. You and me clashed. You and Gareth clashed. That's just the way it is. You got away with murder. You done nothing. Like literally, he says I get away with murder, but I done everything I was asked. He, he like if we were to go out and throw in turf, two minutes. Oh, there's some turf mole in my eyes. I have to go in. <laughs> I'd be down helping Dunkle's farm. I get a phone call to bring in sticks when he's in watching telly because it'd be my turn. I know. You are lazy. The epitome of it. I was. It's yeah. useless. Yeah. And you were annoying. I was. And you see, I had so much. Garrett was left school. So, like, I used to think in my little stupid brain, I used to think, oh, Garrett's tall. I have to go to school. This isn't fair. Right, I as most never, chaps do. I was do. never home after I left school. I was always gone to the wood. Like. No, but in my head, you were not work. You were not in school. I was on my own. I wasn't having fun in school. I didn't find it For fun. Sure, Barry left school and I stayed in. It was much the same. He was always out doing something. You were tough and hardy, and I was a little pussy. I'll tell you what it was with you. Oh, sports. That was the difference. You didn't do any of that. Hmm. I'm not even going to say you were no good at it. You are no good at it. But you never tried to be good at it. No, I didn't. When we, took, when we dragged him to the soccer, yeah, he, he was actually that. decent. But never got into it. There's a bit of a big difference. I didn't, I, was in, I didn't like any lads. So I felt like, because I tried. I tried to do the hurling thing. And I went down to train a few times and I just, everyone was laughing at me. That's, no, what, that's, that's what in I, your head. Yeah, yeah, that's what I felt. Yeah, but it's in your head. And I didn't know and I just said, I'm not putting myself through this. Just a genuine weakness. You know, just been weak. Well, you see, when you're not into, if it's like that, if you're not into sports and you feel like that down there, why would you stay there? When if I felt the very same way, but I liked the sport, I'd stay there. Yeah. It's a bit of both, so. And it's the fact that that's the good thing about sport. You don't have to be the best. Sometimes you go down and because someone's better than your lads quit. Like you like to be good at, what you do. Mm. But it's not the beauty of GA though. Mm, there's a how, grade for everyone. Yeah. Regardless how big an ego you are, there is somewhere for you. I know people say there's bad about the GA, but if you're not a brilliant horror, Well, that's a bad way hurts, of putting it now, being a, being a big ego. Like, I'm just saying. Well, I wasn't seeing a horror, and I'm not, I, I, like, you know. So you're not an ego. No, but just saying. But I've heard C, I've heard B, A. So every year, if there was a good team there, I'd make the 100. They always get hurling. Yeah. No one's left behind in GA. Except lads like you. That don't try. That don't try. Yeah, but you have ones that want to kill themselves at it. If they want to hurl, they'll put in the commitment and they'll hurl senior and intermediate in that. And then you have some lads that can't commit, who's probably better hurlers. But because they can't put the time in or they're going to college or something's priority with him, They'll still come back and do junior. Well, you've seen it from every side because you're. How long are you in the middle of training teams? I don't know. I'm bad with. I know. You're definitely at. How long? Uh, Ten so years. 2006 was the first year you were a selector. Um, I'm selecting and managing probably since 2006. No, not probably. That's the year. I am, so. Kara says. You love it. I don't know whether I love it or not. Oh, for fuck's sake. You put in... It's fierce. It's on. It's hard to explain. He's, he's kind of a club man. He likes to help out. Yeah. I, I think it's more that than love. Yeah. What's the difference between love and being a club man? Like, do you not love the club? Like, sure. when, when, you say you're, when you say you're a club man, like, you, you love the club of cameras, or you... No, I like to see it doing well. Like, 90% of people that are in a parish... They like to see their parish do well. 
So like, I mean, so do you systematically look at that as right? I'm gonna involve myself in this every year at every grade to try and see can I make it better? Yes. Yeah. Well, well not everyone puts up their hand to help. That that's the thing. There's some people that play sports, and that's what they'll do. And when that's finished, then they'll walk away. And then there's other people. Then if everyone did that. If everyone said, right, I'm going to go out now, I'm going to hurl. And when my hurling is over now, I'm going to support the hurling, but I'm not going to have anything to do with it. Well, then you would have no club. And if you had no club, you have no county. So at some stage, people have to put their hands up and say, right, well, I'll do it. And it could be every, like, there's more than just coaching jobs. There's first aid, there's... Do you know, hey, fundraising. There's cleaning the dress rooms. Oh my God. The, the work, work that goes into it. In, a, in, in clubs. Marking the field, putting out flags. The, the things that no one ever sees. What, what's your most memorable part of being involved in GA? I don't have any memorable parts. I, I don't look back at anything I've ever done and said that that was fun. In 2008, I came back after say getting suspended and spending my lifetime probably training to make a senior team and hurl senior and never enjoyed hurling as much as hurling junior A that year which you won the championship we won a championship because it was more fun I suppose senior hurling is you know you have to go out and do your best you do it in every grade but I just enjoyed it more hurling is a, a, a tough sport because you give it everything and you might win nothing like, there's people out there who never won a final. But putting as much as effort as a lad that has 21. And it's a hard thing to do. Say, in 2006, I got suspended and they won a final in 2007. After not winning one uh, since. And I, and I had no part in it. And that was hard. And that was made, made me very bitter, you know. You know. Yeah, it's tough. So there's, you know, and then you could be the best hurler and if you break your knee and you're gone, they'll do without you. Like, if you drop dead in the morning, you're gone as well. Ah, sure, there's a graveyard full of lads that thought they couldn't be done without. And so, hurling sport at any sport is tough. Do you like training teams? I get good old kick out, which, uh, it's good fun now. No, it can be very stressful as well, but I don't let it get to me. But it takes a good bit to annoy me now. And is it... <laughs> Is it man managing that you're doing or is it the actual skill? It's not really skills, is it? I don't think it's anything other than talk and be straight. Stray. If you just talk to everyone the same and treat everyone the same. People don't like people that tell the truth. And the truth's an easy thing to do. But you, like, there's a difference in telling someone the truth and being <coughs> nasty. Just tell them the truth. So I'm after hearing the truth a good few times in my life. Do you know Ah, look, we all do. It's been talking honest and straight probably is a little bit offensive sometimes. Hmm. But sometimes it has to be done. There you go. David. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be a straight talker now, David? I would. <laughs> sometimes now, David, you, you can't be talking straight, can you? You have to tell odd little lies. Yeah. If there wasn't little white lies, the whole world would end. Do you know? We it's a, it's to, on the important things. You just have to be. Yeah. If every if every politician in the morning stood up and told the truth, there'd be nukes flying over our heads <laughs> in every direction. <laughs> Do you know and what? I fact. think it might be the other way because they wouldn't get to that position if they were telling the truth. No, It'd be a very rare. Imagine if a politician had to answer yes, no to every question and answer correctly. Could you imagine how? It'd be great. Yeah, It'd be amazing. You can, you can, it wouldn't be great. It wouldn't. I don't believe that. I think that if there was really a hundred percent straight talk across the globe, and the world would no, I end. mean your politicians. So the people that you have, but they're the set ones in that charge. Be the reason the world would end. No, you're putting these people in charge, but before they get there, you know exactly who that person is because you know them, and you know what their views are, and you know what their morals are. Nobody knows what anyone's views and real morals are now, because they lie to get to where they are. They tell tell everyone what they want to hear. Sure. When you're when you're making decisions, say when you are going to a referendum or you're making decisions or you're voting for very important stuff, if you don't know all the variables, the good news and the bad news, you can't make a decision. 
It's like when you're in business. If you're trying to make a decision and people are giving you the wrong variables, you're going to make the wrong decision because you're not getting the truth. Like, you know, it's, it was in the Bible. Truth will set you free. Yeah, I know, but like, I just do think that if 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 all the, the big guns in the world stood up and told true, I think there'd be nuclear war everywhere. Yeah, maybe now, but I'm saying to, to vet them before you get in. If everyone wouldn't get into power if they were telling the truth the whole way up. Ah, yeah, but how far back would you have to go BC? Oh, you'd... There was lies being told back then. I mean now. So just say there was a... It, to be in politics in the morning, you take this drug. Okay? So do you want to get into politics? Yeah, I do. Right, you take this drug. What does it do? Yeah, I have to tell the truth. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, I, I fucking think I can do it. If everyone was doing it. And everyone was doing easy. it. Could you imagine? Yeah, but... I don't know. I, I've, I have different thoughts and all that. I think it's... I don't think politicians have it all out that easy. No, they don't. Because they're paying, they're towing a party line to stay in where they are. It's a, it's in a tank. You can't... The best politicians are the ones that can talk for the longest without saying anything. Hmm. They're the best politicians that can be asked a direct question and go around in circles and not answer it. It is very frustrating. Well, they're, but they're probably the best... Um, Businessman only turned around. They talk the most shy and, you know, get people on side and tell lies in the process of doing it. And that's how they become rich. And we think they're great lads. I think, uh, I don't know. I think there's an awful lot of people that are rich that wouldn't, 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 wouldn't get to where they are if by telling lies. I don't know. You, get, you, so. might, you might get lucky once or twice, but you won't stay lucky. So, like, everyone has their, their little leader. It doesn't matter to, matter where you are in a big, huge government, or, say, the GAA. When you have little cliques, it, it, it causes a raw. Whether it's in a small little club or whether it's in a business, these little cliques, these little... Cliques are in every, every walk. Like. Yeah, like the FAI, you know, all these, of course, cliques, money. When you, when you first started out in business, how many mistakes would you have made? You know, tax... Fucking we're, we're still making mistakes but like even if you turn around and say you had five lorries in the morning and yeah you give them all the same loads to do one lad's gonna sleep it out you know one put, this, lad, put this up to you one lad will get up in the morning and maybe have a two take and decide to go home after the first load so after five five lorries on the road and come Friday then you're down five load that you've promised to be delivered but you've no control over why they weren't delivered. Yeah. So, like, that's how things and people get let down. Do you know? Because I often see a lad ringing me saying, you know, you promised the time I was at the lorries, you promised 500 ton of pulp, but you only got, got in 400. Mm. You're getting eh. And the lorries that let you down had genuine reasons to break down, get stuck. But that that's um, Suez Canal, that's uh, Brexit, that's... All of them things. It's just, mm. it's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, you're always going to be let down somewhere if, down the line. But say, I wouldn't get into that position again. Like now I just make a simple, I do a simple thing like, oh, now I'm going to have two, two suppliers. One's not going to let me down. I won't put all my eggs in one basket. Because yeah. I thought it was just a simple thing. When I wasn't realizing there is so many things that can go wrong. And when you put all your eggs in one basket, then you're kind of caught rotten. So you still learn. It's like you with the timber. Like, how long are we all timber? A long time. Yeah, it's, it's, got, uh, it's got into a tough game now. Like, it used to be the case, like, with us, we always said, we're going to do, our, our main objective is do the best job we can. Bar, bar not, no matter what happens, water, uh, site, sensitive sites, just do perfection. Has, does it do any good? I think it probably has. A little bit. Like, I'm not saying... Maybe you'd like to be popping the pedestal and everyone clap you heading into the barrier in the morning. But, that'd be nice, know, wouldn't it? Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> but we probably have got work out of doing day some work, you know. Well, I'm more talking about when we went down the road of doing the private work. It meant none. Oh, no, it means none. It only means something to Quilcher, really. So, like, it, it, when, when you went down and you go price, like, how many woods, how many lads would ring you? Look... It's a waste of time. You go down the road, you look at a sale, you price it, you don't win it, you've lost the day. All you're doing is giving them an idea 
of what it's going to cost to do it. Mm. Do you know? Listen, that's the way it is with everyone. Builders must be in the same ball. But he's cutting silage. Same kind of ball. Dog eat dog. Do they lose work every year and game work? Absolutely. Or? If 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 the rain was coming Friday and it was Tuesday, and your best friend gets someone else to cut your silage. I didn't know that was the case. Oh, oh, yeah. would. Hey, think about it. Farmers, right? If a farmer had 300 bales of silage that he didn't need and there was a crisis with fodder, he'd ride any farmer and get as much money for them bales as he could. No. He'd charge mm. 50 no. euro a bale to Is his that? fellow comrade right, for this silage that he doesn't need. He'd be took out for that stem. Okay, you're in bad, you're in He's bad in now. bother now, but hey. You're, you're gonna be a, hey, there's going to be a lot of uncles at his door oh, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, farmers are no different than your big businessman. They try and make money. It's the game. Greg, after this, right, I think we need to have an intervention. Whatever Santi done to Garrett today. <laughs> whatever Santi done to Garrett Santi today. I think, down. I think Santi let Garrett down. <laughs> and when Santi walked out, he got into a Porsche or something. Yeah. Because Garrett's not happy tonight. I'll tell you, Santi in Rat Downey today was awesome. Was he? He really was. Did you um, say in his knee? I did. Did you get a father? I did. What'd you ask him for Christmas? Ah, to make sure all suppliers look after you <laughs> because I can't be listening to you. I'm grand. <laughs> I'm grand. Don't be worried about me. No, you're getting stressed. No, I'm grand now. You oh, are stressed you. when you're working with us the whole time. No, I have to say it's one. Of, it's one of those things. Like you, you can see what I'm at, right? So I've spent the last four, five months trying to get all this set up so as I can get back driving more, <laughs> get back on the machine more, and it's just everything takes ages. But you know, you're you're building. You know what it's like. Everything takes loads and loads of time. Sherman was the slow as fuck getting the room done for me. Every, everything just takes age. Sure, how long how long did we were we waiting for stuff even, Matt? Like just to come like the equipment for the room yeah. and stuff. Yeah, no, it was definitely just, like two weeks. Just, at least. just took everything took a long time. And then we couldn't do anything with that because you're waiting for something to come into the room yeah. for us to be able to bring something in. And just it just took a, a long time to do. And even that room's not finished yet because Christmas came. So my whole plan of getting out of the house say for Christmas getting all the orders it just I, I just missed the boat on it and then everything's come to the house so I had <laughs> Vicky say I want to get down to Christmas decorations there's an order button there's not any boxes in the in the house look what you're doing is um, oh look it's so different to what you've ever done before it's like yeah a, you're, I, I'm learning it's a complete turnaround I wouldn't like it no nor me and I I'm trying to go down the road of not doing ads and when you're not doing ads it's you see there's where I differ from you every chance I get to take a fiver of lad's pocket I take it I know that hey, get rich <laughs> and gone no so no. you're selling your soul you might, you, might, you might as well take people's money well if I uh, I'll sell it with integrity intact ah, David you're bringing back finger <laughs> That's, your integrity hey, gone. hey I'm bringing it back <laughs> hey no I was bringing that back so I was a year and a half ago and then they were talking about today FM and never even got looking I heard that I never even got looking and I was stickers a year before it. and you could prove that yeah yeah I could prove there's it there's copyright there somewhere ah fuck him see that's what I'm saying get dirty take him to court <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon for 100 billion dollars hey will you go see Avatar no, I hated it. Do you not remember we went to look at it the first time? Yeah, but you just want the fag. No, I was... I was that is exactly no, what happened, because you told me you watched it at home and you liked it. Yeah, oh no, I watched it at home after, but in the cinema, they had these stupid glasses on us. Right? It's 3D, it was and brilliant. And the, the whole place was packed. Is it the same again? I think so, yeah. Oh, so Fuck you. How long is it? Three hours. Oh, no. Oh. They have to clear, they have Fed to clear that. one billion dollars to break even. Well, they do ads. <laughs> well you no, see J like, James Cameron right He's after designing All this different software And all what, this Different James way Cameron? of things. Yeah Is that your man That done one and two In the Transformers No 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 He did two and three and four No James Cameron only done um, Like Terminator And the Titanic Abyss Titanic Oh so he didn't do no. You're thinking of, um, What was that Michael Bay Michael Bay Yeah Okay you're thinking of Michael Bay. 
Mr. Explosion. <laughs> yeah. Titanic you did. I can't wait to see it. I'm 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 so looking forward to just three hours. On the 23rd, I am fucking turning that off. And I'm just going to go to the cinema. God almighty, that, that, the first one came out 12, 13 years 2009. Ago. That's how long they're making it. Oh. oh and he yeah. says he doesn't really mind about the money because when they made Avatar 1, all the software and all the stop the motion capture that they designed, it fizzled out to all the other films. So he gets money from all that. It's like the prototype. It's like he's he starts off this way of filming and then he sells it to everyone. He may it's like his showpiece. Okay. God, it's all some of the bullshit Hollywood, isn't it? There's some amount of creeps there. Isn't there? Is there? Oh Jesus. Hollywood's fair full of creeps. Name one. Name him. Well, like, uh, where do you start? Every fucking one of them. Really? I, looking like it. It's looking like it. I'd look well named them here. I'd get something in the post. Fucking. I'd say they are bigger fish, fish fry than fucking us <clears> in this room. You never know. You never know. Oh, but that is just one billion. God, when you listen to the radio now and budgets and they're talking billions and America trillions. I know. Does it even work on a calculator? No, it's it, 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 so much money. It's, it's shocking. And you can't even grasp it. I don't want to grasp it. Would you, what would you do if you had a trillion? Would you buy a yacht, Greg? No. I don't like the water that much. I was thinking about the smell of you. I thought you'd invest <laughs> in electric cars. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Garrett buy shares in Volvo. Bold. Uh, and I'd stick big diesel engines back into one. Yeah, well, there'll be the big diesel engines back. Ah, Are you calling up to me, Greg? You See call, what I mean? You he didn't even me. ask me. You See, never call up. Me. Oh, come up and get your shoulders, come up and get your shoulders. Never said once. He knows. Huh. I asked him a million times to come and get Are you trouble. waiting again? Hmm. Yeah, my name's sad. <laughs> ah, you sad? almost, you almost yeah. pull your hair out looking at that. How did you get it? been abusive. Hey. What would, imagine if everyone had a million. So that means you go the day that, the day after everyone would have a million, your car would be seven hundred thousand. Yeah. And your house would be eight million. Yeah. It'd fall right back into Oh line. yeah. Yeah. I thought he'd go off and buy a house for that sort of money. Well, the prices would just go up. So really what we want Elon Musk to do is just, just give, give us. us a million. Yeah. Each. <laughs> like I have a multi million euro idea. That I will tell anyone the first million that send me a million. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. So, yeah. Ah, look. Let's do that. Money will ruin you. Would it? It'll ruin a lot of people, yeah. Would it ruin you? No. Why do you think that? If I own the Euro millions in the morning and I just I just go, yes. Would you tell us? I wouldn't be hard. You wouldn't tell me? No. You know what I probably do? What? It'd be a great idea. I go to a solicitor. And I do it all up with him and I bring everyone in the family into a room and say, someone belongs to you that to win the half money and they're even you all a million euro. But you never know who it is. Clever. That's clever. But not clever if that actually happens and then we'll know that's his plan. Hey, my dear man. And you're after telling them. Yeah. Now, so. Hey, I'm just giving people ideas because money would ruin. Money would ruin. Imagine ruin. if you're the type of person that can't handle your wages coming to your house. Like you're real bad with money. Then someone dumps a fortune on you. But loads of people are like that. Mm. Like that, and you wouldn't have to go too far to find that. We would have been like that at one time ourselves. Mm. So you're like that. Yeah, not everyone. People are bad at money. In fact, I go on ninety percent of people are bad at money. Ninety. Yeah. He's very negative tonight. <laughs> Sandy. And what did Sandy do? I said Sandy got you in a room on his own, did he? <laughs> no, I, I would think. Look, money is hard handle, lads. It is. It'd be easy to handle if you had enough of it. You have yeah. to speculate to accumulate. Yeah. If you had a few pounds in the morning, if you could expand the business, what would you do? Wouldn't expand it. Oh. You wouldn't? No. I'd probably go buy sales and get lads going and come. This chocolate's rotten. I don't know what it is. It's absolutely disgusting. Still your belly's loving it. <laughs> <laughs> it white what? What was it? Raspberry. Is that what it's fucking rotten? 
You like why, why No, I don't like that. Raspberry. That is oh, horrible. You see, he couldn't help himself with white chocolate. I do like white chocolate. He does like white chocolate. I hate white chocolate. But I wasn't expecting raspberry to be in it. That's disgusting. Yeah, but it's 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 you know it's putting your palate to the test. Greg, would you buy another transit? Yeah, I would. So I, li- I like that, so Dan. Far. Can I ask you the quick fire questions? Oh, yes. Go on. People like these. Can we ask you a question? You can ask me any question you want. What do you get? <laughs> <laughs> That's not been homophobic, by the way. That's something that we do. What do you get? What do you get? What do you get? Why are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. And so, did you write him down? Yeah, I wrote him. You can write. <laughs> are your pubes ginger? No. Grey. <laughs> Go to page one. I know. <laughs> uh, what's your first vivid childhood memory? I don't go, I just think about it. No clue. I can't remember yesterday. Yes, you can. Don't be a dickhead. Greg, you don't take that abuse off him. Hey, what was your first vivid childhood memory? I actually have one. My first one was Mark coming home from hospital. I remember you. Coming home? Yeah. Because we were after moving into the new house. And that's... I don't remember the old house at all. If you can ask one person the question and they had to answer truthfully, who and what would it be? You have me, David. I don't know. Gara. Oh, God. I suppose... This is why the two boys are in business together because Greg can't answer fucking Ant and Gara asks. I just don't want to answer questions. I'd have a question for you. There you go. And the question will be, are you making money? Because I can't seem to get an answer out of you. <laughs> I am making money, and I'm pumping it into this. All right. I was looking for figures now and breakdowns, and <laughs> I, I was much deeper than that. I'll give you breakdowns after the, <laughs> after the podcast. Uh, the Greg, I'm going to try again. Don't fucking not answer this question. Who brings you the most happiness in your life? Now, I know you're feeling vulnerable right now. Right? And you don't like to show your emotions. Oh, there wasn't with Santi today. Yeah. You're not angry. Go on. Who? My family. Who's your favourite? I don't have a favourite. My family. Do you, ha- do you have a favourite? No. I genuinely don't. Don't believe you. I'm telling you. At home, once everyone's happy at home, I'm happy. And I'd include G by his into it as well. Thanks very much. And... That's me. Do you love Garrett more than me? He's easier to get on with. That's a good answer. <laughs> because, um, you know, Garrett's very relaxed. He doesn't come across now because he was with Santi today. But normally... Normally, he... Garrett is happier than this. I know, but yeah. I, like, I was bullied into coming in here. Like, <laughs> me and David now, we would, would, we would clash a little mm. bit. Yeah. We'd probably dispute things a little bit more than me and Garrett. Because he'd have an opinion and I'd have an opinion. Sometimes we just put it to and bed. And Garrett's the one who goes, right, go back to work. Yeah. Go back to work. Would you give out to one another it's, more? It's because your opinions are so stupid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like, why are we even arguing over such shy? I'm normally right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But there's the problem because I normally think I'm right. You normally think you're right. If you know you to be wrong. I do be wrong sometimes. So not do you. all the time. No, yeah, not I, all the time. I think both people can be wrong at one time. Do you think it's beyond possibility that you both couldn't be wrong? No. no. See what I mean? Let's warm up again. Man. Oh, we agree on that, Greg. <laughs> Boom. Gara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you like yourself if you met yourself? I think I would. I think Gara would go a step He'd love himself. He would. He would. Yeah. <laughs> if you were a kick, how'd you date yourself? I, 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 I kiss myself this minute. <laughs> Gara, what's something that you're holding on to that you need to let go of? <laughs> the easy egg. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a stupid question. Um, a chip guy. Have you a chip on that shoulder? I really don't. Now is your t- um, chance. No, I don't. I don't really. Greg? Yeah. 
I'm not answering. Do you trust anyone with your life? Um, no. Trust nobody with your life? Sure. Hey. What's anyone going to do for me? I mean, just trust myself. And... That's a stupid question. That's a very it? good question. Well, I wouldn't take a bullet for him. Yeah. And who, I doubt you would as well. Nobody would. The first thing someone's going to do is they're going to save themselves. Mm. And if anyone thinks any different, look after yourself. It's grand. Yeah. Or, I'm only asking the questions. Huh? They'd be rimming. Yeah. I'm only asking. Yeah. What do you want to be known for after you die? Big <laughs> Greg. <laughs> He's a very nice fella. Big Jamma. Huh? Big Jamma. No, don't give a shit what people think about me when I'm dead. I don't even care what they think about me when I'm alive. What about you, Guy? Uh, I eventually give I, up the fags. No, and I the let him say, Chesla, he was right. He did say he wasn't well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if your life was a movie, which scene would you play over and over? <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> What's the what? What would you count as? What was the best day you had this year? Just this year. Had you, could you say you had a fierce good Jeez, crack at some day? No. It must have been a day when on a bouncing castle or something. I had a really good time. Mm. Did you go on holidays this year? No. I didn't do anything because of the GAA. There you go. Did you go on holidays this year? Fucking damn right I did. Where'd you go? Spain. Was it nice? I had a fun time. Was, was it true the talks that you got attacked by wild pigs? No, that's not. That's not. That is true. That is true. Yeah. No, that was in Barcelona. In the middle of the city. No, we're up in the mountain. Some grotto up there, or something, or something. I don't know. Tourist destination. She was that mad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the, wild, the wild boar was running around. It was fierce, funny, and everyone was having a right laugh at it until he decided to come after us. <laughs> did, did you expect it to come? Not did really, you jump no. in front of the wild boar to save Angela? I did. I wasn't scared of the boar. Oh, oh, yeah, pig before. Yeah, it did. Well, I, I did. I tried it to did. Go. Well, no, it did come. Did you kick it? A very eventful day. Because <laughs> we were um, heading up to the mountain and we were kind of in the middle of nowhere and next thing the taxi, the taxi man, someone plowed into the back of us. And that taxi focused out on the road and left us. <laughs> yeah. And then up and got attacked by whale boars. And did someone get bit? Um... By a boar? Yeah. No. You try a, a, a bit Angela's bag. They're very aggressive, aren't they? Well, I went out to Sweden to you for a weekend now and everyone was saying, watch out for them fuckers. Mm. They, they come with you like the hammers of hell, yeah? They were aggressive. One of them started rooting at the wheel of the machine one day. Rooting at it. Mad bastards. That was my all enjoyment of my poops gone. Danger poops. Could you imagine pooping? And one day I see a moose out there. And that done me all together. Because they're not cute. And they're huge. I mean, they're monstrously big. Make a cow look like a fucking pig. They're that big. Jesus. Why would it make a cow look ugly like a pig? <laughs> I mean, it was small. Like, like I thought, I didn't think they were that big. I thought a moose was kind of like a donkey or a horse with horns. Like a big yeah, fucking... Yeah, I know they are big. I've seen them in Tontelli, like... Yeah, they're fair big. Reindeer. Could you ride a moose? You probably could. You ride an anchor signal. Or stuck enough. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I'd never, I'd never ride an animal. Would you not? No. I actually rode a horse once. Like, dirty, like bastard. dirty bastard. <laughs> Why would you do that? He was um, stuck. Does Angela know? <laughs> She was on another horse. Oh, oh Jesus <laughs> Christ! Oh, what sort of a weekend away with that? What is that? And you know the oaks, yeah. You, you know the oaks you put your feet into. Yeah, they were down too low, and it had me knees bent in under the horse's belly for the hour. That was I was crippled after. It. So I don't like riding horses. When did you ever ride a horse? When was this? When years ago, I went down to Waterford, I think, and rode a horse. Uh, slept a couple of nights down there and. You sleep outside like it was a camping thing. No, we stayed in a nice hotel. Did you ever go camping? Never. Nor want. Nor want. I went about it one night. I went to my car and went home. Got there. Where'd you go? Um. Uh, 
Oh, I can't tell you that. That's a fair secret. Is it a secret or just kind no, of it's a secret? But I did go and I didn't like it and we went home. And why would anyone want to sleep in a tent? For f- Even to sleep in a car. If, can't, if tents were that hard. cold, if tents were that cold, Indians would have never moved into houses. I think they were mad moving into houses, to be yeah. fair. Oh, no, they're not. Ah, oh, come on. You'd freeze to that. Hey, look, there's no such thing as the wrong weather. It's just the wrong clothes, guy. What's the point? Did you ever go camping? No, never. Nor won't. Did you ever kill something? With a bow and arrow? Oh, often, yeah. If you were one of them lads, you wouldn't have been a bow and arrow lad. He'd been an axe. Or one of them big hammers. Last of them. He's <laughs> not a big hammer. Last of them. Yeah. Him. No. Yeah. That, he would have been a hammer. I'd be a sniper. Would you? Yeah. Very seldom a sniper gets a box in the mouth. <laughs> 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 or any belt. <laughs> any belt at all. Everything's from a distance. Oh, fuck. <laughs> right, lads, we may go home. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming in. How about it? Appreciate it. 10 o'clock. Can I have a raise? Uh, no. Am I the best employee you still have? They're actually sad. Absolutely. We just said it with tell you tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't sack me. You can't sack me. Right, lads. I'll uh, have another sweet there. I'm going to make a pig, pig of myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on in a while? <laughs> <laughs> not, not tonight. <laughs>